I'm Stacey Higginbotham here with GigaOM, and today we're talking to Scott Young, who's the Senior Director of Digital Systems for Time Warner Cable, and we're going to talk about kind of how the last mile works for a cable system, and then talk about what that means for your bandwidth, or your broadband connection, and your TV channels. Hi, Scott. Good morning. Good morning. All right, what we're talking about is how cable systems get their internet connectivity to your home. All, all of the internet providers basically at some point get back to the internet backbone in some way, shape, or form or fashion. Uh, big providers out there like Level 3 Communications provides internet connectivity, which will take the signals from Level 3, bring them to our back office where we do processing. Uh, we have multi-gigabit routers at these uh, facilities. This is where we'll also have our local servers for DNS and DHCP uh, will be sitting on these premises. From there, we will feed to our head ends and hub sites. There's a head -end, cable head end, which at the cable head end, uh, again, we bring multi gigabit into a DOCSIS routing device, at which point the RF, the DOCSIS CMTS, the cable modem termination system, converts that IP bit stream into a modulated RF carrier that's compatible with the cable plant. And so here we're moving from all IP to IP over IP RF. Over RF right. It's still IP, it's just modulated because the cable plant, of course, can only carry an RF signal. Uh, we take it, we modulate it, we send it out to, uh, you know, using the fiber optics and lasers that we installed several years ago to all these neighborhood nodes. And there are many thousands of these nodes out here, each one of them may have carry around 100 homes passed. So there's 100 homes here, there may be 50 customers that are sitting off of this node, and you know 25 or 30 of them may have a cable modem. So each one of those cable modems is then feeding back to this DOCSIS device, to the DOCSIS cable modem termination system. Okay, so my limitations on my cable broadband speed are what other people are downloading at the same time? Uh, there, this is a, you know, just as with any data service, at some point you aggregate all these data back together. We aggregate this data at the node level, um, then it's kept separate as it goes all the way back to the internet backbone. It goes through several aggregation routers, but at this point, yes, there may be 50 people who are using this service at any one time. There's probably only 20 people who are actually online at one time. So unless you've got somebody who's downloading you know, uh, an entire Linux distribution, you're probably not going to be in what you'd call much contention with other users. Okay. Um, we manage the network uh, to make sure that all of our users are receiving the appropriate speed. We, uh, we monitor the bandwidth weekly um, to see what levels are happening in terms of bandwidth utilization. Whenever that level gets up to 70%, we start taking action. We'll move to, uh, to take one of these nodes and we'll actually split that node it's two nodes will come off of, you know, we have, we have all this fiber that we've put in, like I said, many years ago. We'll take this node and we'll split it so that there are actually two nodes then, feeding now 25 homes each. Sounds good. So where do things like bandwidth caps come into play in the network management plan? In the, in the current model that, that uh, you know, the industry is looking at, there's 99.5 plus percent of the people who use the internet as we would call them normally. They will download music, they'll download video clips, they'll download even whole movies. But there's this you know, 0.2, 0 0.3% of the people who are actually taking advantage of the service and are running full servers at their house. They're running um, data networks that are doing you know, BitTorrent servers and moving tremendous amounts of data over the network. And that's something that, that, that the network certainly can do it, but it wasn't really designed to do to be equitable across all the users. So that's why we're actually monitor that usage and sorry about that. Monitor that usage and take appropriate action, you know, to, to uh, work with those those users. You may have to edit. <laughs> I'll edit that out. So anyway, where were we? You were talking about network management and yes. monitoring the users. We, we, you know, we, we, uh, 
you know, they're, they're and I hate to use the word monitor the users because we don't take it down to the user level. Uh, we really look at it as a node by node level. Okay. So when we hit that 70% mark, when we, when we look at it. Now there are some plans in place. I know Comcast is looking at it, Time Warner is looking at some of it in, in certain areas to where they do, will start metering some of the bandwidth that's used. Because again, we're not looking for the people who are using their internet normally. It's the 99% the plus percent of the people don't have an issue with the bandwidth caps because they're never anywhere close. Sure. But the people who uh, who are using an abnormal amount of the, the bandwidth are the people that we're looking at, bringing it to their attention and saying, hey, you know, this is what you're doing. Maybe you would better like a commercial connection. Maybe you would like a symmetrical connection. Maybe you need 100 megabits of service. So we can give them that level of service. And we need to get them to that point so that they're not on the same network with the residential customers. Okay. And how do you explain kind of the discrepancy between the caps that Comcast is offering, which is a cap of 250 gigabytes, versus Time Warner's trial caps, and I understand that these are trials, um, that tops out at 40 gigabytes per month? And I'm sure that was just, you know a number that at some point was just chosen. I don't know how they derived that number. Uh, once we get through the trial, We'll see what you, they're, they're looking at it just as a data gathering exercise right now. How many people are falling over this line? How many people are falling under this line? Uh, you know, the Comcast 250 meg model is, is certainly, I would think, beyond what the even the 99.9 percentile would use. Uh, so, Comcast is really focusing in on that very, very small number of, of abusive service users. I hate sure. to speak for Comcast. But. Sure, and and I, I will not torment you with my questions about bandwidth caps because, you know, it's not nice to, to mess with the network engineers, right? All right, well, thank you very much, Scott. I appreciate it, and 